All right, today we're gonna to talk about the MPU 6000 versus the ICM 2602 gyro, both made by Invensense, or TDK is now the company name. Uh, TDK bought Invensense. We're gonna look at some of the specs in between them and also some tests that have been done so far and to see which is the best gyro. There's really two gyro manufacturers out there that flight controller boards use. 98% of the boards on the market use TDK gyros. TDK gyros are such things as the MPU 6000, MPU 650, ICM 2602 is a very popular one, and the ICM 2802, which was used for a little bit, but it seems to be phasing out. For the longest time, the MPU 6000 was the only gyro chip used. This had a maximum 8K sampling rate. About five to seven years ago, the MPU 650 and the ICM series of gyros came out as well. Those could sample up to 32K, and they had different spec sheets and so on and so forth. You gotta understand when TDK or Bosch, or anybody, is generating gyro chips, they're really, their market is not quadcopters in, for the whole. Sure, in recent years, they'll recognize that the gyro chips are also used in drones, but their primary market is things like cell phones, huge industries, and the drone industry is just a very little part of where their gyro chips can be used. Another gyro chip manufacturer that's on the scene that's only used in the Radix board, as far as I'm aware right now, is the Bosch Gyro, and that uses a BMI 160, and now they have a new one out that's a BMI 270 as well. So the Radix exclusively uses the BMI 160 as far as I'm aware. I don't know if they're going to switch up to the BMI 270 or not. Going back to the TDK, it's used by all the other flight controllers out there. The MPU series is actually discontinued, but there's so much stock in Mauser and DigiKey and so on and so forth around the world that you see a lot of new flight controllers that are still installing the MPU 6000 chips on the board. And why is that? It's discontinued. Why are they using the MPU 6000 when the ICM series is the new and improved series of chip out there? Well, let's try to peel the onion back a little bit further and see what's going on there. So what you can do for any of these chips is you can simply go to Google and type in MPU 6000 and simply doing a, a Google search, you can see Mauser is a, manu is a provider, reseller of just chips and components, but you can come down, DigiKey's the same, you can come down to the Invensense TDK and you can go ahead and click on that. And for the MPU 6000, it'll take you right to the data sheet specifically for it. Of course, you can do the same for the ICM 2602, 2802, whichever one you have or board you're looking at. And of course, these sheets, these data sheets are very technical, so you can read to your heart's content. But well, there's a couple key things that we're gonna actually look at in these, and one of them is their shock resistance level. And you can see when we line up both documents here and look at the shock tolerance of the MPU 6000 versus the ICM, that the ICM on its data sheet is looking better. It's about double the shock tolerance. It's about 20,000 G shock tolerant, whereas the MPU 6000 is about 10,000 G shock tolerant. So again, if the MPU is discontinued and it had half the shock tolerance as the ICM 2602, wire boards still coming with the MPU 6000 gyro chip loaded on them. Hmm. So let's go through some data. So this is on a quadcopter from a top pilot out of Florida. He had a flight controller board with an MPU and an ICM 2602 on it. And I was helping him do some stuff. I asked him to switch between the two. Now obviously they're two different flights, so you do have that variation, but you know, he's running a course, ran the same course. Obviously it's not the exact same line and things of that nature. So you, there is that variability in this but you can see the difference between the MPU 6000 and the ICM 2602. And in this test result, now this is just a sample of one, and we talked about that difference in the flight part of it, it's not like they were recording the same exact noise, that you can see the MPU 6000 was actually producing higher peak and higher averages of noise, just by a little bit. And you can see here just the peak numbers versus the mean and the peak over here and in the MPU 6000 was just a bit higher. And I of course have these logs if anybody would like to receive them and take a look at them yourself, more than happy to provide. In the next test we're gonna take a look at, this was with a dual flight controller rig. This is actually a gentleman that contacted me about three years ago. We kind of brainstormed the dual FC flight controller rig together and he actually did it before I did. 
and uh, did a bunch of testing on different things. For this, we used a Omnibus NXT, and that is this flight control board right here. So it was the Omnibus NXT F7. And you can see in this stack here was the same board, exact same board. Got two from Airbot on that. And then the gyro is actually in this little silicon uh, little dampening thing on top of the board there. Now in this board's layout, they have the ICM 2602 gyro here in this gelatin thing up top here. And then the MPU 6000 chip is right here, just surface mounted to the board. With the logging on this, the advantage is they were both armed and the logging started exactly at the same time. So obviously then it's the exact same flight that it's recording the noise from, et cetera, et cetera. With a small caveat. So if you notice on here, he used nylon standoffs for everything. So this is a nylon standoff to the PDB, another nylon standoff to the bottom board. And then this we ran a various test. Um, we were really trying to look at soft mounting versus hard mounting of the flight control board. So in this picture specifically, he has some gummies here for the standoff. But in the tests I'm showing you, it had hard mounted, so it just had a nylon standoff between the two boards here. What we found out is that we were getting always consistently higher amount of vibrations on the higher board. And that's why in my setup, I don't use nylon standoffs. I use straight pins coming up through. So I've learned through that, that having a metal stud going up through to hold your stack together is way better than nylon standoffs. With nylon standoffs, the higher your flight controller is on the stack, the more vibrations it's going to receive based on the tests we've done here on this. And we did that basically this higher board was always receiving more noise. So we just flipped them to the, the higher thought maybe there was a problem with the specific board and just a deviation between the two boards, flipped them and then the, the board that was always higher in the stack always got more noise uh, and vibrations read through it. I don't have the same thing on my metal studs with the dual flight controller board that I have running. And obviously I did test to confirm that, flip things around, so on and so forth. So in this data set, we have two different flights and in between these, we flip the board back and forth. So on this flight, the ICM gyro was used on bottom and then the MPU 6000 was used on top. And on this flight, the MPU 6000 was used on the bottom and the ICM 2602 was activated on top. So when you're looking, what you're trying to do, it's it's somewhat tricky uh, to, to really read the data correctly, but you gotta keep in mind this hot top board, whichever one was set for the top, always had more noise on it. So you're really trying to compare between when the ICM 2602 was on the bottom versus the MPU 6000 on the bottom, how did those read between, and then the same thing over on the top two boards here. The only trouble then, of course, is that they're not the same flight. They're two different flights. So when you're looking at the information, you gotta kinda keep that in mind. But you can grab some general trends with this. You're trying to look at the magnitude of the uh, noise, the heat mapping you're looking at here. And really, you know, with the PID toolbox, it does that for us with these peaks and averaging. So let's just condense those peaks and average, this mean, between the two and let's put that into an Excel file and see what we can see different between the two. So keeping in mind, this is a sample of one. This is just one test where we turned on the different gyros on the two boards up top versus bottom, vice versa. However, when looking at this, I can draw some conclusions. So let's, this is the mean from those charts and pin toolbox. This is the peaks from those charts and pin toolbox. So we're looking at the mean data on roll pitch and yaw and we're looking at this one up here where this is the flight where the MPU 6000 was at the top then the ICM was on the bottom and then the ICM was on the top and the MPU 6000 was on the bottom. And you can see obviously the brown bars are one specific flight and then the more the blue bars are another specific flight. So you can see kind of the differences between the two. And one thing that could have kind of stood out to me is that when the ICM chip was put on top, it drew out a lot more average noise in this specific test than it did, than it looked like the same for when the MPU 6000. Now we did have more drawn out here as well. So it's 
you know, is it conclusive? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really think it is, but it is an observation I saw with this data. You can see the difference between these blue lines is a lot more when the ICM was put on top versus the MPUs on the bottom, where now the MPUs on top and the ICMs on the bottom, and you can see the difference there. Now, keeping in mind that in both scenarios, the gyro sampling rate was AK sampling rate. So it's not like we're comparing 32 versus 8K in that whole scenario. Looking at the peak data, we don't really see that much differential. So the peaks between the two, except for down here, when the ICM was put on top, the peak on the yaw was a heck of a lot more in this specific flight than vice versa in the, in the other way. Now you can still see that the, you know, the MPU was still pushed up above when the ICM was on the bottom for specifically the yaw access here, but just the differential isn't, isn't there as much. So there could be something to the what you hear out in the hobby about people saying that the ICM gyros are just more sensitive to noise and vibrations than the MPU. It's not a conclusive result, but it, it does provide some evidence to kind of back up that claim. Of course, for anything to be more conclusive, it would have to be more testing would need to be done. Okay, so where does this leave us? Well, I have some experiences with this as well. One of the experiences I had was with the Luminaire Lux flight control board, and there was a lot of gyro twitches and electrical issues with that flight controller, and I, there's a lot of people who have had the same. And one of the things that we did is we switched that also has an Invensense ICM2602 and a MPU6000 on board both of it both those chips both chips were hard mounted on the board they're just in slightly different locations on the board and in either case the glitches and the gyro glitches that it had from I presume some sort of electrical isolation issue um, and all the boards that we tested had it the MPU6000 seemed a little bit more resistant to it. It was still there, but the peaks of the gyro glitch for the MPU6000 chip on it weren't as bad as it was for the ICM. Still unacceptable. The board just needed to be replaced altogether. So that was some anecdotal evidence. A lot of the devs I talked to in the beta flight arena that are really well versed in this stuff, I mean, those, some of these guys really know their stuff, all really are big supporters of the MPU 6000 board. Now that could just be from past history, it's tried and true, but I don't know of any scenario where I've seen yet where somebody said to me, hey, the ICM worked better for me than the MPU. It's always been the other way around. Now, a lot of times it's a little difficult if they were trying one flight controller and they switch to a different flight controller, which, you know, the one flight controller had the IMC and the MPU was on the other flight controller. You know, when you're switching complete flight control boards, like different designs and everything, there's a lot of components that are changing there. So and it's not really a good apples to apples, but you know, I talked about what I saw in the Luminar Lux. That was the same exact board. Some of the data we're seeing here, some of the anecdotal things that you know, just from experts in the, in the hobby that I respect. So there is some warrant to this manufacturers, you know, continuing to use the MPU 6000, even though it's a discontinued chip and the ICM 2602 on paper looks better. Ultimately, what I'd like to do is take my dual FC rig and I need to get exactly two flight controllers that have both chips on them as well hard mounted, so on and so forth, and run some more tests on this. Uh, I just haven't made that purchase yet. I'm really looking for the right flight control. I think HDLRC has an H and F7 board that has both on it that I could use. But if you know some other boards that would be great boards to give some more testing, please drop a comment below. I'd love to get your input on that. And what are your thoughts? What are your experiences between the ICM2602 versus the MPU6000? As always, everybody, Thanks, and I hope this helped.